Alright, hello everyone and welcome to Mass Effect Legendary Edition, a new Let's Play on the channel. Uh, one that I've had quite a few comments about if I'm going to play Mass Effect or if I've played it. And this is a blind playthrough of the whole series. I've uh, only ever played like an hour or two of the first Mass Effect game on Xbox 360 years and years ago. Uh, so this is basically a clean slate, enough to consider enough to consider the first game a definite blind playthrough, as well as the full series, and I'm so excited because everyone speaks so highly uh, of this series, and I'm very excited to, to get into it. So I'm sitting here tonight, ready to jump right in to a first episode. Uh, so yes, we'll play the first game in the Legendary Edition, a lovely little remaster that arrived at the perfect time, because I have had uh, quite a few comments, like I said, asking about it. Uh, so I was like, why not? It's a new release. Let's jump onto the train um, and play some play some Mass Effect. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, let's get into the the first episode. Uh, we'll just lay some ground rules, just so you know just how blind I am on Mass Effect. Um, I did like a short list of these are the things I know about Mass Effect. I know that femship is cool. Romance options. Everybody dates everybody or something. Um, the Mass Effect 3 original ending was controversial. Andromeda sucks. We don't talk about Andromeda. And I think that's kind of all I know about the Mass Effect series. Um, it's hard to know absolutely nothing. Um, especially when I'm a really big sci-fi RPG fan. So this kind of, like, leaks into my circles sometimes. So I'm aware of, like, tiny, tiny things but nothing that'll take away from the game. So with that one, guys, let's jump into the very first episode of Mass Effect. All right, so once you're on the legendary screen, start menu, it takes you to the brand new start menu for Mass Effect. It looks pretty. I like it. Press any button. This UI is clean, and the like. The menu music is so tranquil. I feel at peace. I'm about to go into space. <laughs> wow. Feels cool right off the bat. Start new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. Nice. Profile reconstruction. Due to your covert N7 status, ID records are incomplete. Please confirm identity from the records below or register manually. John Shepard? Jane Shepard. Or enter a new ID. Manually enter career info and physical stats into the Normandy crew database. So I guess there's like, you have your pre-built male or female. Or you can, like, mess around with it a bit. Um, people say Femship's cool. I think we'll go with, we'll go with Jane Shepard. Please log in to access your profile. Can't really put my name in there. So we will go with Jane Shepard. We will be Jane. So the, I, Femship is Jane. Profile reconstruction complete. Jane Shepard. Origin, Earthborn, Reputation, Soul Survivor, Class, Soldier. All right, so I guess you get to choose, if you do a custom one, you can choose Origin, Reputation, and Class. Uh, for the sake of playing as a particular character set in a story, um, I'm fine with this, uh, especially for a first playthrough, uh, to just go with probably what the game intends, um, and then later down the line I can mess around on subsequent playthroughs. But for now, we will be an Earthborn Soul Survivor soldier called Jane Shepard, aka Fem Shep. Combat difficulty, uh, normal. Points must be manually assigned. Uh, I think that's fine. In classic mode, the original 1 to 60 level range will be used instead of the new 1 to 30 level range. 
XP and talent points progression remains the same, but the number of levels is doubled. So this is like the legendary edition, so they change it to 1 to 30. XP and talent points remain the same, but the number of levels is doubled? If the talent points progression remains the same, that kind of feels like it's just um, extending the levels just because. I don't know. Um, we will play legendary mode. Squad AI will only use defensive powers to protect themselves or others. Will not use any talents. Uh, cool, I'll do defensive. Uh, auto save. We'll overwrite the auto save file. Cool, I am happy with that structure. Let's get into it. Subtitles on. Well, what about Shepard? Earthborn, but no record of her family. Doesn't have one. She was raised on the streets. Learned to look out for herself. She saw her whole unit die on a cruise. She could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery. The civilizations call it Mass Effect. Okay, that's the reason for the title. I know it's a remaster, so they've improved graphics and stuff, but goddamn, it looks pretty. Prime relays in range. Initiating transmission sequence. Commander. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. Station secure for transit. Board is green. Approach run has begun. what that Foster. is check navigation nice check internal emission sync engaged all systems online drift just under 1500k 1500 is good your captain will be pleased I hate that guy <laughs> Nihilus gave you a compliment so you hate him you remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Dialogue choices. Mm, is this like, this will be good, neutral, bad, I assume? It seems that way. They don't send specters on shakedown runs. So there's more going on here than the captain's letting up. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Ethan Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the calm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? 
I'm on my way. <laughs> Is it me or does the captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. That's great. <laughs> uh, I wanted to let the cutscene play out before I nailed down some points, but like the Halo lover in me is instantly pleased. Uh, I've played all the Halo games, big Halo fan, love Halo to pieces. Like I was getting slip space vibes from the relay, which is cool. Uh, Captain Anderson also being the voice of the Arbiter <laughs> was like, I was like, ah, Halo fits in very well here. I was like literally walking on the bridge. I was like, this is like some very like triumphant walk on the bridge which gave me like Master Chief meeting Captain Keys on the Pillar of Autumn Bridge energy sort of thing. <laughs> so instantly love this. Um, dialogue feels good. I like the dialogue choices. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. Just be like, oh, brace yourself. Uh, Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. All right, can't talk to everybody, but. Good, uh, good opening. Regroup. Okay, I'm assuming the D-pad is related to squad commands. That's cool. Um, nice. I can't stop aiming. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander. Just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. Okay. This is like the positive, neutral, negative, optional. Like, more information side. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Oh, cool. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. I instantly. I instantly like this. I like. It looks very. Like. They looks like. Instantly based off this this one interaction with multiple branching paths, I'm excited for the amount of dialogue and information that I can gather to understand this story. Which makes me very happy. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. Do you have a problem with the Captain? No, ma'am. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. I'm definitely seeing the Xbox 360 original Mass Effect animations, but with better graphics, so it's like, it's fine. I don't mind it. Everything looks pretty. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. Space racism. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military. But Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. Nice. Galaxy map. Corporal Jenkins. Hello, 
Corporal Jenkins, it won't let me talk to you. Ah, oh, Jenkins is... Ah, oh, Jenkins over there. Okay, so you gotta... When it pops up with who you can talk to, you have to look for the little icon. I'm gonna try and get dialogue. We want to take everything in. We want to get the story. We want to understand it. We don't want to like skip through stuff. Uh, anyone who is already familiar with my Let's Plays on the channel uh, are probably aware that we try to be as thorough as possible when going through these games. Um, at least recently. And if you're new here, coming for Mass Effect and you consider sticking around, that's kind of the go here. We're not speedrunners, we're taking it in. I really want to have a lovely, fun, and in-depth first experience with the game because I really want to appreciate what makes these games so iconic and well-loved, uh, you know? What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Only a fool goes looking for a fight, Corporal. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even paradise gets boring after a while. You're too hot-headed, sir. You're going to get yourself and your squad killed one day. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. I like her voice. Yeah, everyone salutes me, baby. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to, Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. I do know now. It's beyond beautiful, based on what that guy said. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. <laughs> you do kind of want to just be like, that's obvious. I really like the premise, because uh, this is a pretty common thing that humans are pretty much babies. We are children in terms of human space exploration, you know, because there's always bigger things, more established civilizations. So there's always like that chain of command or a hierarchy of just like, Mate, we've been traveling the stars for thousands of years and you've been doing it for the past couple of hundred type of mentality. Pump the brakes, kiddo. You think you're all safe, but like I've seen some shit. Like, which is which is really, you know, pretty common when we encounter the old alien races type deal. We're just like, come on, man. You humans. Come on. Is someone gonna fill me in, Captain? We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. 
Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big, Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. This is like... Again, I'm gonna. I feel like I'm gonna. I'm gonna try not make t way too many comparisons to to Halo or like the vibes that I get. But it's like Prothean is giving me Forerunner vibes because like the Prometheans from like you know Halo Four and stuff that came in. So it's like give yourself ancient civilization to base your technology on. Mwah. Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The beacon is not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. <laughs> like hell he is! I guess that explains why I bump into him every time I turn around. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Were it so easy. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. Mm -hmm. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Cool. I liked seeing the um, I liked seeing the solar system, uh, like our solar system at the beginning. That was cool. Very like. You know, giving us some like perspective of like, it's not like super far away. It's like, hey, we're just chilling out in our solar system, and we use the the relay to zoom on out of here. So we're on an Eden Prime. Eden Prime just seems like it's going to be like very much like an Earth Two type deal. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Dude, I can't wait till we have like actual humans on Mars in real life. That's gonna be so fucking cool and I hope to live to see that. <laughs> I love space so much and I love space exploration so much. That would be so incredible for me. Um, also, uh, what I do want to mention as well is because I did stay at the beginning like years and years ago I played like an hour or two of this game 
is I didn't go extensive on dialogue. I just kind of was like, oh yeah, I wonder what this is going to be like. I want to see what the gameplay is like, see if I enjoy it type deal. So all of this dialogue is like very fresh for me. I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, didn't look at any like lore stuff. I just kind of like went through it, shot some guys, walked around some places. So there might be some familiar familiarity. Oh my God, I can't pronounce words. Might be some familiarity with some things, but this is like, I'm very blank on all of this. So it's, it's cool to like be learning this stuff and actually taking in the dialogue. So that's just like for context. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low-key. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden Prime. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! out after that no calm traffic at all it just goes dead there's nothing reverse and hold the 38.5 mm -hmm. status report 17 minutes out captain no other alliance ships in the area take us in joker fast and quiet this mission just got a lot more complicated a small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention it's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Alenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Word so easy. <laughs> All right. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. I guess the stealth isn't like a visual thing, but more so like stealth from like scanners and stuff. Uh, a text box appeared and then disappeared instantly before I was even able to do anything, so that's cool. Squad! Hostiles everywhere. Keep your guard up. Smells like smoke and death. Oh god, what happened here? Okay, nice. Alright, that's how we swap weapons. That's, uh, that's cute. Oh. We got a weapon wheel. Oh, it's one for each. Okay, so these are mine. Okay, I get it. Nice. We got like four weapons each. What are you doing with the pistol? You can have the sniper. You can have the shotgun. I will have the lancer. The lancer. Gears of war, baby. Let's go. Where's my Where's my chainsaw? What the hell are those? 
Guys, it's it's literally the flood. <laughs> it's literally the flood. It's the flood. Guys, I said I wouldn't make Halo comparisons. Oh god. What was that? I said I wouldn't make Halo comparisons, but they're making them for me. Is there Let's do let's do a controls thing. Um let's do a controls situation. Shooting configuration, stick configuration. Okay, so they're not going to they're not going to let me see the actual game controls, so we will figure it out uh, as we go along. That's fine. We'll figure it out. Uh, favor quality? No. Favor frame rate? Yes. We want a smooth experience, baby. Um, we got a codex. Roughly twelve hundred years. Ago, it's voice acted. Invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Torians have the largest fleet in Citadel space, and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Torians have come to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the First Contact War of 2157, which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. Civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. The First Contact War. Dude, the Codex is voice acted? That is insane. Codexes are filled with information. And they voice acted it. Oh, that's that's so good. Because what that means is, like, I kind of feel a li little bit better if you want to check out some stuff sometimes in the episode instead of me, like, reading it in my own time and reading it out loud to you because it, like, exhausts me. A voice acted codec, dude? Rook. 50,000 years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. They vanished in a swift galactic extinction. Only the legacy of their empire remains. They are believed to have built the mass relays and the citadel, which have allowed numerous species to explore and expand throughout the galaxy. Prothean ruins are found on worlds across the galaxy. While surprisingly intact for their age, functioning examples of Prothean paleotechnology are rare. Time and generations of looters have picked their dead cities and derelict stations clean. Some believe the Protheans meddled in the evolution of younger races. The Hanar homeworld of Kaje, for example, shows clear evidence of former Prothean occupation. The presence of a former Prothean observation post on Mars has caused a rebirth of interventionary evolutionists among humans. These individuals believe the god myths of ancient civilizations are misremembered encounters with aliens. So cool. Um, yeah, I genuinely love this. And first episodes of a Let's Play are usually like testing the waters of what suits the let's play and what doesn't like i wasn't expecting to really jump into a codex and get this information in the episode but the fact that it's voice acted is really nice because it allows us to like really dive in and like get deep with stuff because it's like it's the same way that like uh i've been playing the metal gear solid series blind and that's been a really good time and we've been getting to a point with uh peace walker metal gear solid peace walker and the phantom pain where they have cassette tapes that you listen to all of the information in big sections and it's all voice acted but you get a lot more information help enriches the world type deal so um i'm i'm grateful for the fact that this is not just written it also helps with pronunciation because i'm like I wouldn't see the word Kaje and know to say that. <laughs> Spectres are agents from the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance and answer only to the Citadel Council. They are elite military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. 
They operate independently or in groups of two or three. Some are empathetic peacekeepers, resolving disputes through diplomacy. Others are cold-blooded assassins, ruthlessly dispatching problem individuals. All get the job done one way or another, often operating outside the bounds of galactic law. The Spectres were founded after the Salarians joined the Council. For many years, they operated in secrecy as backroom problem solvers. Only after the Krogan rebellions did their activities become publicized. Assignment of a Spectre is less contentious than a military deployment, but makes it clear that the Council is concerned about a situation. I'm also thinking what could be good is when we get new codex information, sort of just going through it as it as it comes in so we can take those sort of breaks to get that lore information that's relevant to when we obtain the codex entries instead of being like, ah, I didn't check it at all. And now I've got, you know, tens or hundreds of, you know, entries to, to go through. So if I want to include it and show it to you guys, we'll do it like as it comes. Uh, let me know how you feel about that. If it suits, I mean, Obviously, we can always just do the thing where you just skip past it to the to the gameplay. If you already know this stuff, and you don't want to know my reactions or thoughts about it. Um, but also, in games where it is quite extensive with lore and there's a lot of dialogue and breaks between gameplay, is I do, you know, accommodate that in terms of episode length to to get a sort of balance. Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that time, the Alliance allowed survey fleets to activate any dormant mass relays discovered, a practice considered dangerous and irresponsible by Council-aligned races. When a Turian patrol discovered a human fleet attempting to activate a relay, they attacked. One human vessel survived, retreating to the colony of Shanxi. The Turians followed, quickly defeating the local forces. Shanxi was occupied the first and to date only human world to be conquered by an alien species. The Turians believed the handful of ships they defeated represented the bulk of human defenses. So they were unprepared when the second fleet under Admiral Castany Drescher launched a strong counter-offensive, evicting them from Shanxi. The Turians mobilized for full-scale war, drawing the attention of the rest of the galaxy. The council quickly intervened, forcing a truce. Fortunately for humanity, the first contact war was ended with a diplomatic solution. Fortunately for humanity. That's literally like a human and covenant war interaction that was that is just in the history of this of this game, you know, in this series. The Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Sol's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. The expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Still, the Alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the first contact war. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. Nice. Planets and locations. The Terminus systems are located on the far side of the Attican Traverse, beyond the space administered by the Citadel Council or claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. It is populated by a loose affiliation of minor species, united only in their refusal to acknowledge the political authority of the Council or adhere to the Citadel Conventions. Their independence comes at a price. The Terminus is fraught with conflict. War among the various species is common, as governments and dictators constantly rise and fall. The region is a haven for illegal activities, particularly piracy and the slave trade. At least once a year, a fleet from the Terminus invades the nearby Attican Traverse. These attacks are typically small raids against poorly defended colonies, 
The Council rarely retaliates, as sending patrols into the Terminus systems could unify the disparate species against their common foe, triggering a long and costly war. Dude, give, uh, give, some, give some props. Uh, give some props to the voice actor for the Codex, my man. Um, so there's a primary and a secondary. Um, so I'm just trying to, ah, there we go. I did want a timeline. So I'm, I'm like, maybe we'll focus on primary stuff and secondary will be like need to know, depending on what Pike's my interest. Uh, the timeline does. The timeline is not voice acted. There you go. So primary codex entries. That makes sense. 2069, baby. Armstrong outpost at Shackleton Crater becomes the first human settlement on Luna. So the moon. Ah, oh, the hundred. Because I was literally going to say that's the hundredth anniversary of the lunar landing. Oh, that's great. Um, Lowell City, the first human settlement on Mars. No, 2103. Guys, if we apply this to our current time, I will be dead <laughs> by the time humans settle on Mars. No! Let's hope we can get there before then. That'd be great. I might live to the year of 2069. That'd be great. And we can all hold hands and just say nice together. It'd be great. Um, helium fuel extraction from the atmosphere of Saturn. Orbit of Pluto. Prothean ruins are discovered on Mars um, 45 years after. Damn. So we get led to the mass relay, 2149. Whoa. Born in Singapore after element zero exposure, cancerous growths. Commander Shepard was born in 2154. First contact war in 2157 when Shepard was three years old. Okay, so the first contact war was not long ago. That's pretty fresh. The first contact war was not like something that was like, you know, oh, this was a couple of hundred years ago. This is fresh within Shepard's lifetime. The potential of bionics. Established an embassy on the Citadel. Current date, 2183. The first contact war... Okay, it was 26 years ago, 20, 26 years ago? Yeah. 20, no, 24 years ago. No, maths, maths. Hang on, first contact war, 2157, 2183, 26 years ago, 26, um, which means, Shepard is 29 years old. Cool. I understand. I really like a timeline to understand where I am. So Shepard's 29 years old. The first contact war was 26 years ago. So that's that's still pretty fresh. That's still pretty fresh. So Starship Sensors. A personal history summary. Born on Earth. So this is because of the, the things that you are sort of like preset as picking Jane Shepard. I like the whole Soul Survivor, like, Lone Wolf story anyway, so that's that's fine. Uh, so we literally have a backstory. I love that. Okay, Codex section over. Thank you so much for checking it out with me. Dude, look how good this looks. Alright, so I, I've already got points to put into stuff. Assault training... Soldier, Charm, Intimidate. Yes. I would like to put a point into my Charm, please. Um, I will purchase an Assault Rifle skill. And I cannot purchase First Aid. Um, increases health. Um... Let's put one in soldier, just three in each. Um, is there a confirm option? I don't know. Um, a mass effect field. All right, you're the first aid guy. We're putting first aid points into you. 
Okay, so you unlock your first thing for first aid. Jenkins, um, he's also an assault guy. Point into soldier, point into assault rifle. Nice. Okay, is that all automatically assigned? I think so. Yes, cool. Um, wonderful. They got a photo mode as well. Easy. All right, now let's get into the gameplay. Let's get into the gameplay. Um, be interesting if there was a way to stop. Ah, okay. You automatically get into cover. That's nice. I like that. What is this? Shield regenerator. Reduce to Omni Gel. Or take all. And we got a codex entry for that as well. So that's in secondary upgrades. Okay, so it's an upgrade kit that upgrades our weapons. Okay. In equipment? Okay. Okay, so you can buy or obtain upgrades. Wonderful. Good to know. I'm sure we'll explore that at some point in time. I wish that there was a option to just check my controls uh, in the game because it's, it's very weird that it would do that. Um, I'm just going to pull up Mass Effect controls real quick because I don't want to just be pressing the wrong button because it's 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 weird that they wouldn't just have I know it's just going to come up automatically interact with A draw holster weapon B so there is an option to put your weapon away nope that's melee okay <laughs> All right, well, I guess the controls that I'm looking at this are wrong. All right, L and A is run, so that is that is correct. Selectability with RB, that is correct. Use sabotage, use throw. Why can't I put my gun away then with B? It's melee instead. Skip dialogue with X. Apparently that also throws something. Prone. Well, no, that's just crouch. So we can crouch. LB, select weapon. RT to fire. Okay, that's an explosive. That's good to know. Uh, zoom with a sniper. Access mission computer. Okay, we can choose where people can go. That's cool. Squad takes cover. Move squad. Squad rallies to you. Or oh, squad targets an enemy. Okay. I understand. I got it. Um... Mainly just needed to figure out how to run. Um, like I said, it's new episode. We are teething. Just don't want to press the uh, the wrong buttons. I've already thrown two grenades unnecessarily. We all got to learn to play the game somehow. My man's got fucked up by sentinels. By Mass Effect sentinels. Ooh, baby. And the little... And the flood. And the flood. Ah! Oh, nope, that's not the button I meant to press. Is there a reload? Did we just lose a man? <gasps> we just lost Jenkins! We're out of chance. Wait. Was he my first aid guy? We'll see that he receives a proper service once the mission is complete. But I need you to stay focused. Aye, aye, man. Bruh! I just lost a dude to my squad straight away. Okay, no, we've still got the first aid guy. You're the first aid guy. You couldn't even save him, Caden. Damn. 
Genetic barriers, more commonly called shields, provide protection against most mass accelerator weapons. Whether on a starship or a soldier's suit of armor, the basic principle remains the same. Kinetic barriers are repulsive mass effect fields projected from tiny emitters. These shields safely deflect small objects traveling at rapid velocities. This affords protection from bullets and other dangerous projectiles, but still allows the user to sit down without knocking away their chair. The shielding afforded by kinetic barriers does not protect against extremes of temperature, toxins, or radiation. Thanks, Codex Man. Dude, this game looks beautiful. Medigel is needed to heal injured squad members. Omnigel can be used to bypass decryption and electronics challenges. Both are, can be acquired by defeating enemies and are opening containers. Press Y to use Medigel to heal my squad. Good as new. Oh, and then that's in the middle of the screen. Okay, so we don't reload. Oh, the weapon overheats. And then it cools down. I'm gonna check it out. I'll try to catch up with you at the dig site. Use the squad screen to improve the team's abilities. Cool. Well, we already did that, so that's great. We leveled up Jenkins for no reason. So that's, so that's fine. Jenkins is dead, but you have to press onto the dig site. Okay, so a pretty easy way to know what we have to do. Okay, so the controls are coming up. But, like, it would be nice to have a point of reference for when I clearly am going to forget. Okay, so regroup and follow me. Dude, look at the light coming through the trees. Like, we're in the middle of, like, a war and everything's gone to shit, but, like, I'm just like, this place is actually as beautiful as that dude was saying. Even when it's being torn apart. I always have, like, this knee-jerk reaction to want to reload, but I, I don't have to. I don't have to. Humans adapted to using space weapons really well. Oh my god. The laser beams are literally... Halo plasma rifle sounds, dude. <laughs> this is just Halo. In third person. The fuck? Did you really have to do him like that? This is that uh, Ashley person that was on the video screen, right? Upgrade kit. Where? Where? Oh, it's highlighted there. Geth Trooper. The Geth. Radioactive rounds, anti-personnel rounds. Man, they've just impaled a bunch of people. Uh, I'm over here. That's a rock. Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams of the 212. He the one in charge here, ma'am? The 212th Battalion, baby. General K Kenobi Squadron. Are you wounded, Williams? A few scrapes and burns. Nothing serious. The others weren't so lucky. Oh, man. We were patrolling the perimeter when the attack hit. We tried to get off a distress call, but they cut off our communications. I've been fighting for my life ever since. Where's the rest of your squad? We tried to double back to the beacon, but we walked into an ambush. I don't think any of the others... I think I'm the only one left. Bruh! You abandoned them! This isn't your fault, Williams. You couldn't have done anything to save them. Yes, ma'am. We held our position as long as we could, until the Geth overwhelmed us. The Geth haven't been seen outside the Vale in nearly 200 years. Why are they here now? Mm. They must have come for the beacon. The dig site is close, just over that rise. It might still be there. You're coming with us, Williams. We need that beacon. Aye, aye, ma'am. It's time for payback. Let's get some Geth info. What else do you know about the Geth? Just what I remember from history class back in school. They're synthetics, non-organic life forms with limited AI programming, created by the Quarians a few centuries ago. They were supposed to be a source of cheap labor, but ended up turning on the Quarians and drove them into exile. Well, after that, they just kind of disappeared behind the Perseus Veil. 
Nobody's really heard much from them since. Hmm. Have you seen a Turian Spectre around here? There aren't any Turians on Eden Prime. None that I've ever met. Not sure I'd be able to tell if one was a Spectre anyway. If you saw this guy, you'd know. Carries enough firepower to wipe out a whole platoon. Luckily, he's on our side. Sorry. Like I said, no Turians. Move out! Alright, we, we got another person in the squad. Okay. Jenkins was replaced just like that. <laughs> Rest in peace, Jenkins. Alright, uh, assault rifle um, and soldier. Literally the same as what Jenkins had. You are now Jenkins too, Ashley. Uh, we got a non council race, so I believe this will be the Geth. Yeah. The Geth are a humanoid race of networked AIs. They were created by the Quarians 300 years ago as tools of labor and war. When the Geth showed signs of self-evolution, the Quarians attempted to exterminate them. The Geth won the result of <laughs> war. This example has led to legal, systematic repression of artificial intelligences in galactic society. The Geth possess a unique distributed intelligence. An individual has rudimentary animal instincts, but as their numbers and proximity increase, the apparent intelligence of each individual improves. In groups, they can reason, analyze situations, and use tactics, as well as any organic race. Geth space is located at the trailing end of the Perseus arm, beyond the lawless Terminus systems. The Perseus Veil, an obscuring dark nebula of opaque gas and dust, lies between their space and the terminus system space skynet baby this is the the ai this is an exa literal example of ai taking over they're like oh crap they're sentient they're self-aware try to terminate them and then they're like nah <laughs> we terminate it now baby fuck wild Light armor. Ah, we can change our armor as well. Armor. There we go. So we've currently got Onyx. We can change to Scorpion. Aldrin Labs. Han Kadar. It's got better shields. It's got tech and biotic protection. But And we've got Omnigel. Reliable and efficient, Earth-based Han Kadar has become a major supplier of the, to the Systems Alliance military. Their weapons are considered stock quality at best, though their armor lines are generally recognized as above average. Dude, they literally have lore for the manufacturers as well. That's great. And then you can see how it'll look on you. And you can mark stuff as junk as well. That's cool. Um... And then we've got our armor upgrade, shield regenerator, 15% shield recovery. Um, I might just keep my, we'll just keep the onyx armor. But I can change it for everyone else, can't I? Yeah, okay, I can change it for everyone else. Uh, I'll upgrade Caden with it then. Because that's better. Cool. Looking out for my, looking out for my teammates. Yo. <laughs> Yo, is that, is that their primary purpose? Entry, enter cover. Okay, so you have to have your weapon drawn. Okay, so you can press B to pull your weapon out. Approaching a low object will make you crouch. Take cover behind it. Click L to manually crouch. Move to the edge of cover. Ah, oh, you can move out to aim. Cool. Nice, once those shields are gone, they're just like ready to go down. That's cool. X to throw a grenade. Ah, oh, you press it again to detonate. Okay. Oh, great. Good stuff. You don't stand a chance. They look cool though. I think we're 
good, Commander. Impaling victims instead of just shooting them. There's some reason behind it. Well, that's what I thought. Psychological warfare. They're using terror as a weapon. Okay, so you can reduce the items you have to Omni Gel either when you pick them up or when you go into the equipment menu. Um, we also got two shotguns. Hurricane and Simtar. Heavy shotgun, it fires larger than normal rounds and sacrifices accuracy for increased power. Automatic shotgun, Alanis wrist control, uh, high rate of fire, poor accuracy. Mm. I'll chuck that on. I'll chuck that on. Everyone's got the standard storm. And then you can do your upgrades. Okay, so you can do an ammo upgrade and a weapon upgrade. Shred flesh and other organic matter. These rounds are particularly effective against living targets. Can you take off an upgrade? Uninstall upgrade. You can. Awesome. Radioactive. Minuscule amount of radioactive material in inducing low levels of radiation sickness in targets. So that's also probably for the living. So I will not equip them yet because it looks like the things that we are fighting are... Uh, robotic. <laughs> robotic in nature. So we'll probably leave that alone. I don't want to equip them. Okay, there you go. That makes sense. Gotcha. Oh, you got six points now? Get another one in charm. We're going to be charming. We're going to be charming. Um, assault training. Another assault rifle. And... Let's put one into Intimidate. You know, we're gonna, we might need to Intimidate sometime. We can't always be charming. Sometimes you need to put your foot down. Even though negative, negative choices in dialogue options are like, No! Decryption increases the amount of Omnigel recovered. Yes. Also, Barrier... Yes. Um, you can have soldier assault training combat armor, assault rifle. It's fine. We would just put one in each. Make you very incredibly balanced. Combat hard suits use a dual layer system to protect the wearer. The inner layer consists of fabric armor with kinetic padding. Areas that don't need to be flexible, such as the chest or shins, are reinforced with sheets of lightweight, ablative ceramic. The outer layer consists of automatically generated kinetic barriers. Objects traveling above a certain speed will trigger the barrier's reflex system and be deflected, provided there is enough energy left in the shield's power cell. Armored hard suits are sealable to protect the wearer from extremes of temperature and atmosphere. Standard equipment includes an onboard mini frame and a communications, navigation, and sensing suite. The mini frame is designed to accept and display data from a weapon's smart targeting system to make it easier to locate and eliminate enemies. But can we pee in the suit? Can we pee in the suit? Does it flush for us? What is the canon answer? Is it going to be like Master Chief's armor in canon? 100%. This is definitely not false. Jacks him off. <laughs> Does the N7 suit jack you off when you can't remove the suit? It's a real question to ask. These are human needs, people. Can we pee in the suit? Does it jack us off? This is the dig site. The beacon was right here. It must have been moved. By who? Our side or the Geth? Hard to say. Maybe we'll know more after we check out the research camp. We make for the camp. It's just on the top of this ridge, up the ramps. Let's go! Change of plans, Shepard. There's a small spaceport up ahead. I want to check it out. I'll wait for you there. Okay. Um... Oh, the select button! So the back button is, uh, select is how we disengage. Cool. Uh, also, the map. Zoom out with RB. 
Train station. Camp. Dig site. Okay. Kind of wish... Kind of wish I would be... Okay, you have to highlight who we are. Shepherd. So we'll go left from here. Oh, you can set a destination. Hold on. And then that's marked on the map. Cool. All right. So I believe it's, uh, it's this way. No, this is where we came from. This is where we came from. Am I going crazy? Yes, we're going the wrong way. Gotcha. We want to go this way. So the sprinting is a little bit awkward, but I will I will get used to it. The camera doesn't automatically follow my character where I'm facing. You kind of have to. Uh, it's like they hit the camp hard. It's a little weird. It's a good place for an ambush. Keep your guard up. Bro. Yo, what the fuck? Oh god, they're still alive. Oh. <sighs> it's not just impaling them for show. Husk. What? It converts them. Into robot zombies. Oh my god. Get smacked. Robot zombies, baby. I think we got him, Commander. Yeah, we did. The HUD looks good. I like it. I like how clean the middle is, where it's like, this is your shield and health. There's your squad. That's how many healing items you have. Simple. Looks good. That door is closed. Security locks engaged. Hey, Caden, you're up. Decryption or electronics to access. If any squad member has the required talent. You'll be able to unlock the object using the decryption or electronics interface or by spending Omni Gel. Repeat the sequence of button presses before time expires. Oh, we have to actually do something. Okay. Begin manual override. Okay, cool. That's pretty simple. I'm fine with that. What's up? Humans. Thank the maker. Hurry, close the door before they come back. Don't worry. We'll protect you. Thank you. I think we'll be okay now. It looks like everyone's gone. You're Dr. Warren, the one in charge of the excavation. Do you know what happened to the beacon? It was moved to the spaceport this morning. Manuel and I stayed behind to help pack up the camp. When the attack came, the Marines held them off long enough for us to hide. They gave their lives to save us. No one is saved. The age of humanity is ended. Soon, only ruin and corpses will remain. Did you notice a Turian in the area? I saw him, the prophet, leader of the enemy. He was here before the attack. That's impossible. Nihilus was with us in the Normandy before the attack. He couldn't have been here. Manuel's still a bit unsettled. We haven't seen your Turian. We've been hiding in here since the attack. Hmm. What else can you tell me about the attack? It all happened so fast. One second we were gathering up our equipment, the next we were hiding in the shed while the Geth swarmed over the camp. Agents of the Destroyers. Bringers of darkness. Heralds of our extinction. We could hear the battle outside. Gunfire, screams. I thought it would never end. Then everything went quiet. We just sat there, too afraid to move, until you came along. Dr. Warren, can you get your assistant some food? That dude's going crazy. What's wrong with your assistant? Manuel has a brilliant mind, but he's always been a bit unstable. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? <laughs> to see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape? No hope? No. I am not mad. I'm the only sane one left. I gave him an extra dose of his meds after the attack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can shut him up. All right, we're out of here. Williams. Take us to the spaceport. You can't stop it. I can shut him up. Must be an intimidate option. Night is falling. The darkness of eternity. Hush, Manuel. Go lie down. You'll feel better once the medication kicks in. Get that man a Snickers. Get that man a Snickers, please. He's not himself when he's hungry. Chocolate bar time. Me 
Speedy Mama Explorer. Seventeen seventy-two. It's pretty much. It's like just better. It's like just better. Codex non-sapient creatures. After the Geth secure a location, they round up and impale dead and living bodies on mechanical spikes. The spikes rapidly transform these victims into withered husks, extracting water and trace minerals, and replacing them with cybernetics. The cybernetics reanimate the lifeless flesh and tissue, transforming the bodies into mindless killing machines. Some Alliance soldiers refer to the husk-generating spikes as dragon's teeth, a reference to the mythological berserkers who sprang up from the earth wherever the teeth of the dragon Eris were planted. Dragon's teeth and husks bear little resemblance to other pieces of Geth technology. No one is sure why a synthetic race would bother to drain the minuscule amount of recoverable resources from organic corpses, though the value of reusing them as shock troops is obvious. And also they're terrifying. They're literally terrifying. No, oh, thank you. All right. Um, map. Train station, baby. That's where we headed. Okay. This way. There he is. Oh. Right. Right. Saren. Nihilus. Ah. Uh. This isn't your mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. Dude, this dude looks evil as fuck. I wasn't expecting to find the Geth here. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control. Ah! <laughs> Wait. The Geth are here? Always have been. Boom! Okay, this has reignited uh, a brief memory where I was like, I was not trusting Nihilus for a second because I was like, I was pretty sure when I picked up the game that there was something to do with someone being evil. And it was a Turian, but a different one. Saren, who actually just looks like a fucking evil dude straight off the bat. He's like, oh yeah, you, could, you needed some help. You're dead now. Fuck. His armor uh, looks like it's got some like geth influence on it. Like it's got like some of those like random tubes and like cybernetic shit. Yo, 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 yo. Chill out. Um, this dude who's got the Shock. Oh. Use, a, use snipers, guys. Use sniper. Keep your distance. Don't get too close. Oh, there you are. Actually, I want to use a sniper. That packs a punch. I feel that in my controller. It's nice. It's nice. Override success. Everybody stay calm out there. We're coming out. We're not armed. Is it safe? Are they gone? <laughs> it's safe. And then... You're okay now. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Those things were crawling all around the shed. They would have found us for sure. We owe you our lives. Ugh. I still can't believe it. When we saw that ship, I thought it was all over. It showed up right before the attack. Knew it was trouble the second I saw it, so we made a break for the sheds. Do you know anything about the Prothean beacon they dug up? We're just farmers. We heard they found something out there, but it never really mattered to us. Not until now. Cool. I have to go. Bye, farmers. Cole, we're just a bunch of farmers. These guys are soldiers. Maybe we should give them the stuff. 
Jeez, Blake, you gotta learn when to shut up. <sighs> you have something to tell me, Cole? Some guys at the spaceport were running a small smuggling ring. Nothing major. In exchange for a cut of the profits, we let them store packages in our sheds. What kind of packages? I found a pistol. Figured it would come in handy if those things came back. But you'll probably get more use out of it than we will. Ah, uh, here's our two options. You're holding out on me, bitch! We're risking our lives to save this colony. You sure there's nothing else in here that could help us out? Yeah, there's one more thing. I was gonna sell it after this was over, but you probably deserve it more than I do. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Who's your contact at the spaceport, Cole? What's his name? He's not a bad guy. I don't want to get him in trouble. Besides, I'm not a snitch. He might have something to do with this whole attack, Cole. We need his name. It's important. Yeah, okay, you're right. His name's Powell. Works the docks at the spaceport, if he's still alive. Cool. I have to go. Good luck. Nice. Info, baby. Storage locker. Electronic skill is too low. Electronic skill. Ah. He can't even level up electronics at this point. Got some more equipment. A stinger pistol. Nice. Anti personnel rounds. It's fine. Okay, we'll keep, we'll put the stinger on. And then he gave us something else that we could like sell. He was like, I was gonna sell this when we were done. I wish I didn't skip over like I accidentally like pressed the button when I was just trying to open the door. And I like skipped the thing. But that's okay. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Alright. What lovely farmers. See, we didn't even have to intimidate them. Just be, just be nice to them. Commander. Ah. Oh! Yep. Fuck. It happened right here. Oh. No, dude. Something's moving over behind those crates. Wait! Don't, don't shoot! I'm one of you. I'm human. What are you doing, sneaking around back there? I am sorry. I was hiding from those creatures. My name's Powell. I saw what happened to that Turian. The other one shot him. I need to know how Nihilus died. The other one got here first. He was waiting when your friend showed up. He, he called him Saren. I, I think they knew each other. Your friend seemed to relax. He let his guard down. And Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. I'm just lucky he didn't see me behind the crates. We were told a Prothean beacon was brought to the spaceport. What happened to it? It's over on the other platform. Probably where that guy Saren was headed. He hopped on the cargo train right after he killed your friend. I knew that beacon was trouble. Everything's gone to hell since we found it. First that damn mothership showed up, then the attack. They killed everyone. Everyone. If I hadn't been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. Oh, so this is Powell, yeah. Cole mentioned you. Uh, I don't know if we need to say that. That gives away that he's a snitch. He was just trying to help out. How come you're the only one who survived? Why didn't anyone else try to hide behind the crates? They never had a chance. <laughs> I, I, I was already behind the crates when the attack started. Wait a minute. You were hiding behind the crates before the attack? I... Sometimes I need a nap to get through my shift. I, I sneak off behind the crates to grab 40 winks where the supervisor can't find me. You survived because you're lazy? If you hadn't snuck off for that nap, you'd probably be dead just like all the others. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't really want to think about it. We need to find that beacon before it's too late. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. I, I, I can't stay here. I need to get away from all this. What's, I don't know what's happening. There's like a weird text pop-up that keeps appearing and disappearing. I don't know if that is information that I'm supposed to have or whether it's like a weird bug or whatever. 
But um, I'm not skipping anything, it's just literally popping up and then disappearing before I'm even able to interact. Dude, he's fucking dead. <laughs> they go down in one punch! One punch! Hold RB to bring up the power wheel. Yep, we did this before. Use barrier, throw, sabotage, use overkill. Map overkill. Oh, cool. Sweet. Well, we can look into that soon. Oh, great. All right, we got to, like, go... Th All right, I see what's going on here. Whoa! <laughs> oh, fuck! Hang on, I'm going to die! I'm going to die! <laughs> oh, fuck! I just got absolutely destroyed. God damn. Holy shit. Okay, the recovery... Dude, the melee cooldown is slow. You melee and you're like... Yep. <laughs> wow. That is a slow melee. Okay, we just need to make it to the end. Can I just remove the waypoint? Yes, I can. Alright. Um. Alright, let me try and... I need to... Do that. Yo, that dude's big! Geth Destroyer! I'm gonna die again. <laughs> I'm gonna die again now! Ah! Oh, I lived, bitch! Holy shit. That was reckless. Um, okay. Uh, use snipers. Use sabotage. I don't think sabotage worked because they weren't close enough. That's fine. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get over the fact that their assault rifles just sound like plasma rifles from Halo, baby. Oh, the other one's there. Okay. Shotgun time. Bitch. Gotcha. I like that we can get four weapons each. That's really nice. Mm. Set the charges. Destroy the entire colony. Leave no evidence that we were here. Yeah, dude, he's got, like, cybernetic eyes. What the fuck? Yeah, he's got a very similar aesthetic. To the Geth. I don't think Nihilus had, like, cybernetic eyes. That dude looks like he's got, like, implants and shit. I guess that was, like, what they were talking about with, like, bionics. Demolition charges. The Geth must have planted them. Hurry! We need to find them all and shut them down. I love how they've kept some of the UI. You can tell that some of it's the same because they wouldn't dare have that in a modern game. Like the slow bar that like goes up like but 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 <laughs> and some of the like button commands, it's very 2000 and like it's very like first Xbox games, Xbox 360 games like 2006, 2007 style. So I like that they've retained some of the game's identity. Um, 
but also there's some of it that looks really nice. Like, it doesn't look bad, but it just looks like it was made in that time period. Why are you doing up close, guys? You die in one punch. Well, that dude's got a barrier up. My my map is jammed. Oh, get sniper, bro. Right. Um, I want to do the sabotage thing. Get it work. That guy really... Oh, he's a shock trooper, so he's a little stronger. Okay. Bitch. Get down. Get down. <laughs> Hurricane shotgun. Duelist light armor. Why would you... Why would you wear that? Why would you wear that? You want to destroy any trace that you were here? I say no. This way? Yes? This way. Ooh. Hold on. I guess because Ashley's not close. No, Ashley is close to me. Why doesn't she have overkill? Maybe it depends on the weapon. Oh, she's got a sniper equipped. That makes sense. Does she have the sniper equipped? She does, so she can't use overkill. It makes sense. Oh. Dude, we got the beacon. Alright. Let me just quickly have a look around. <gasps> Storage locker. Gotcha. Another hurricane shotgun. Okay, so I can start seeing when we will start marking stuff as junk. When we start getting, um, when we start getting seconds and we're like, okay. We can start throwing that shit in the bin. Banshee assault rifle. Cool. Mark some stuff as junk. I can tell that the beacon will be the last thing to do here, so we just gotta look around. Begin manual override. Okay. <laughs> sure. Combat sensor, armor pissing rounds. Nice. My man, Caden, is or is almost dead, dude. Yeah, he's a medichel. Heal up, buddy. Need to pay attention to that. Thermal armor. I guess that's a bit of, like, a bad thing about the UI. Like, is their health is very, very, uh, small. Medium armor. I can't equip it. And I can't even look at the details. Oh, it's a it's Turian armor. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Investigate the Prothean beacon. Normandy, the beacon is secure. This is amazing. Actual working Prothean technology. Unbelievable. It wasn't doing anything like that when they dug it up. Something must have activated it. Don't touch it. Roger, Normandy. Standing by. <sighs> Don't touch it. Uh, this is classic. Oh shit, she got damned like. Shut up. No, don't touch it. It's terrible. Mmm. Oh. Oh. 
main character moment. I wonder what those flashes mean. So Saren could do that unharmed because he did that and then the cutscene took us back to us. We identified the ship that touched down on Eden Prime. The Normandy, a human alliance vessel. It was under the command of Captain Anderson. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. She kept her cool, dude. Classic villain with anger issues and very cool, calm advisor. <laughs> Doctor? Dr. Chakwas. I think she's waking up. You had us worried there, Shepard. How are you feeling? Oh, uh, you know. Saw some flashes that have now marked me on a mission, a quest of destiny, space destiny. Uh, what happened? How did I end up here? How long was I out? About 15 hours. Something happened down there with the beacon, I think. It's my fault. I must have triggered some kind of security field when I approached it. You had to push me out of the way. You were careless. Yeah, he was. He was pretty. He was pretty careless. I won't say. Don't blame yourself. He was pretty careless. Where's the beacon now? What happened to it? The beacon exploded. A system overload, maybe. The blast knocked you cold. Williams and I had to carry you back here to the ship. What's the damage, Doctor? Physically, you're fine, but I detected some unusual brain activity. Abnormal beta waves. I also noticed an increase in your rapid eye movement. Science typically associated with intense dreaming. A vision, doctor. I saw... I'm not sure what I saw. Death, destruction... Nothing's really clear. Okay. Hmm. I better add this to my report. It may... Oh. Captain Anderson. How's our XO holding up, doctor? All the readings look normal. I'd say the command is going to be fine. Glad to hear it. Shepard, I need to speak with you. In private. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll be in the mess if you need me. Sounds like that big... <clears throat> Are you sure you're okay? Um, yeah, just this guy called Saren. You heard of him? I don't like soldiers dying under my command. Jenkins wasn't your fault. You did a good job, Shepard. Did we leave Gunnery Chief Williams back on Eden Prime? I figured we could use a soldier like her. She's been reassigned to the Normandy. <laughs> that, that's a mistake. Williams is a good soldier. She deserves it. Lieutenant Elenko agrees with you. That's why I added her to our crew. Intel dropped the ball, sir. We had no idea what we were walking into down there. That's why things went to hell. The Geth haven't been outside the Vale in two centuries, Commander. Nobody could have predicted this. You said you needed to see me in private, Captain? I won't lie to you, Shepard. Things look bad. Nihilus is dead. The beacon was destroyed and Geth are invading. The Council's going to want answers. I didn't do anything wrong, Captain. Hopefully the Council can see that. I'll stand behind you and your report, Shepard. You're a damned hero in my books. That's not why I'm here. It's Saren, that other Turian. Saren's a specter, one of the best, a living legend. But if he's working with the Gith, it means he's gone rogue. A rogue specter's trouble. Saren's dangerous, and he hates humans. Why? He thinks we're growing too fast, taking over the galaxy. A lot of aliens think that way. Most of them don't do anything about it. But Saren has allied himself with the Geth. I don't know how. 
I don't know why. I only know it had something to do with that beacon. You were there just before that beacon self-destructed. Did you see anything? Any clue that might tell us what Saren was after? Just before I lost consciousness, I had some kind of vision. A vision? A vision of what? I mean, I, I personally don't know. I had a vision of Star Wars. I saw synthetics. Geth, maybe. Slaughtering people. Butchering them. We need to report this to the Council, Shepard. What are we going to tell them? I had a bad dream? We don't know what information was stored in that beacon. Lost Prothean technology? Blueprints for some ancient weapon of mass destruction? Whatever it was. Saren took it. But I know Saren. I know his reputation is politics. He believes humans are a blight on the galaxy. This attack was an act of war. He has the secrets from the beacon. He has an army of Geth at his command, and he won't stop until he's wiped humanity from the face of the galaxy. I'll find some way to take him down. It's not that easy. He's a specter. He can go anywhere, do almost anything. That's why we need the Council on our side. We prove Saren's gone rogue, and the Council will revoke his specter status. I'll contact the Ambassador, and see if he can get us an audience with the Council. He'll want to see us as soon as we reach the Citadel. We should be getting close. Head up to the bridge and tell Joker to bring us into dock. Dude, they they did great with the voice acting. They did great. They picked some they picked some good people. Like Jennifer Hale as Jane Shepard. Good choice, guys. Good choice. We love Jennifer Hale. I'm uh Glad to see you're okay, Commander. I'm happy about it. Commander, I'm glad to see you're okay. Losing Jenkins was hard on the crew, and I'm glad we didn't lose you, too. Things were pretty rough down there. Yeah, you never get used to seeing dead civilians. It doesn't seem right somehow. But at least you stopped Saren from wiping out the whole colony. I couldn't have done it without you. We're Marines. We stick together. And I'm just sorry that we lost Jenkins. Yeah, I wish I could have done something to save him. I was there. You did everything right. It was just bad luck. It's been a hell of a shakedown, Cruz. Our first mission ends with one Spectre killing another. The Citadel Council's not going to be happy about that. Probably use it to lever more concessions out of the Alliance. You've got a good grasp of the situation. You a career man? Yeah, a lot of biotics are. We're not restricted, but we sure don't go undocumented. May as well get a paycheck for it. Besides, my father served. I made him proud when I enlisted. Eventually. But is that why you're here? Because of your family? I never met my parents. If they wanted to see me, they'd have contacted me after that mess a few years back. Oh, that's right, a coos. I imagine that bought you any post in the fleet. Word is we're heading for the Citadel, ma'am. Can you, uh, tell me why? The captain's briefing was confidential. Understood, ma'am. Whatever happens, we'll be ready, Commander. Thanks. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? I recognize this woman's voice from Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, on PS1. I do. And that's the only place that I, that I recognize this voice from. What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. <laughs> Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. You're a good soldier, Williams. You belong on the Normandy. Thanks, Commander. I appreciate that. I need to go speak with Joker. Goodbye, Commander.
shepherd's locker? Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Codex. Citadel and Galactic Government. Humanity and the Systems Alliance. Okay, so this is secondary. Uh, statistics. Equipped with Mass Effect Generating Element Zero Cores. Stats. Because if anyone got curious about the stats of the Citadel, there it is. Humanity and the Systems Alliance. Systems Alliance N7. The MVC consists of one letter and one number. A soldier's MVC indicates proficiency, not rank. The letter notes career path. The number indicates level of experience, as indicated by service record, technical scores, and commendations. All 26 letters are used, and numbers run from 1 to 7. N is the letter code for Special Forces personnel. So the number, level of experience, we at the top, right? By being N7. Special Forces. Best of the biz. Primary, Citadel and Galactic Government. The Citadel is an ancient deep space station, presumably constructed by the Protheans. Since the Prothean extinction, numerous species have come to call the Citadel home. It serves as the political, cultural, and financial capital of the galactic community. To represent their interests, most species maintain embassies on the Presidium, the Citadel's inner ring. The Citadel Tower, in the center of the Presidium, holds the Citadel Council Chambers. Council affairs often have far-reaching effects on the rest of the galactic community. Five arms, known as the Wards, extend from the Presidium. Their inner surfaces have been built into cities, populated by millions of inhabitants from across the galaxy. The Citadel is virtually indestructible. If attacked, the station can close its arms to form a solid, impregnable shell. For as long as the station has existed, an enigmatic race called the Keepers has maintained it. The Keepers. Spectres are agents from the Office of Special Tactics and Recon. Cool. Gotcha. Speak to Joker. Alright. Um, is this the right way? No, that takes me to the sleeping pods. I guess we want to use a lift to go upstairs. Sleeping pods. Nice. Good old cryo. Good old cryo. Never heard anyone. The sprinting is a little bit awkward. Staircase or the elevators? We take the stairs, baby. We keep it in shape. Okay, this is where this is. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew. Nav manual. Okay, so you can in oh, you can get optional codex stuff based on stuff that you check out. Okay. Military jargon. Oh, like okay. FNG freaking new guys, yep. Yeah. Cool. I like that. They're just like, hey, understand why we give stuff to stuff. And why we say things. Alright, uh, well we're going to be talking to Joker and we'll get him to dock at the Citadel. Uh, with that one though guys, I think we'll bring this first episode of Mass Effect to a close. Um... I hope you appreciated the extensiveness of us going through the codex and us learning everything and taking in all the information. I intend for this to be a pretty thorough first playthrough and I'm having a great time so far. Gameplay is fun. Everything's put together really well. I enjoy the characters. I enjoy the dialogue. I'm, I'm having a great time. Music's good. Compares to Halo really well. <laughs> like... Yeah, really having a great time. So I'm excited to see how the Citadel is going to go. So that should be next up. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the first episode of Mass Effect. Hope you guys consider sticking around uh, for the journey. And I'll see you next time.